Um, my first question for you is, how did you begin your career with Icon Galleries and Icon Funds? Um, actually, it uh, happened uh, a little bit by, um, uh, you know, happenstance or coincidence. Um, I was always very interested in, in the arts, and uh, my wife and I, um, you know, would, weren't doing this anything in, in a very formal business sense, but we were always, uh, you know, looking out for art. We bought some art, etc. Uh, and then around 2000, uh, we felt um, that um, South Asian art, uh, Indian art, for instance, uh, was not getting represented in the US, and there was a wealth of uh, talent, and there was a wealth of work that was coming out of India. Uh, and I remember one time um, being uh, in the New York subways, uh, very late at night on a Sunday night, and um, I mean, these thoughts were sort of, uh, you know, kicking around in my head, but I hadn't done anything formal about it. Uh, and it was, uh, because it was late Sunday night, it was a very deserted subway. There was just one uh, kid in the train and uh, he was dressed in a very sort of urban, you know, clothing, very hip hop. And uh, so I didn't pay much attention at first, but then I was, I looked at him again and he was reading a book. And I said, I wonder what book he's reading. And when I focused on it, I realized he was reading a book which you may or may not know of. Um, it's by an Indian author called Arunthi Roy. It's called The God of Small Things. God of small things. Okay. And I thought, my God, here is this young kid, New York kid, black kid as it turned out, and uh, he's reading a book uh, by an Indian author set in a very Indian, South Indian context, and uh, he's getting something out of it, obviously, he's reading it. Uh, and so art painting, which in some ways it's easier to comprehend and you know, requires a little less of context, surely should be, should be something that uh, people here ought to be able to respond to. Uh, I wouldn't say this was the trigger, but this is one of the you know things that got me thinking that perhaps this is worth doing. So we started. Uh, we had um, I had grown up with a lot of art. Uh, my father used to be in what you would call the National Endowment of the Arts, you know, an, an organization like that in India. So as a consequence of growing up in a household like that, I knew some of the artists. Uh, so it was easier to be able to approach them. Uh, and see if they would be interested, uh, and there was really no platform for them in New York, uh, and so they were more receptive than perhaps they would have been otherwise. Um, and that's uh, that's how we started. Uh, we started initially as a pure online platform. It was initially Arts India, right? Arts India, and okay. not only Arts India, but it was artsindia.com. So okay. you know, back <laughs> in the in the, the, the you know the. The sunset era of the dot coms. <laughs> uh, so it was purely an online uh, platform at first, uh, which of course made it easier to, to begin, but um, especially with art, uh, we realized pretty quickly that we ran up against uh, the, the, the constraint that most people wanted to see the art and feel the material and so on. Uh, and so we transitioned in 2002 to having a physical uh, space. Okay, very interesting. Um, so I guess my next question is, what factors can you attribute to your success in both your partnership with Icon Galleries and Funds and your work in the field of economics? You have a lot of success there as well. Well, so um, as far as the art business is concerned, I'd say you know a lot of it is just dumb luck in the sense that you've got to get the timing right, and you can't you know sometimes the timing you can't force. Yeah. Uh, if it happens, and you're fortunate that it happens, you are there at the right time, then you, know, you make some good decisions, hopefully, but uh, uh, the, the rising tide also helps to lift you. So there's a combination, I would say, of being in the right place at the right time, you know, New York. Um, in 2002, uh, 3, 4, 5, um, that was uh, at a point of time when the Indian art market was sufficiently nascent that um, one could get into it, you know, the entry barriers were not very high, but at the same time, um, the market was, uh, you know, it was it was not a robust market, so it it, um, it was, you know, you had to think very hard about how you were going to manage your resources, mm -hmm. and we were fortunate in that pretty early on, uh, in the second year that we were around in 2003, we were able to acquire a very important collection. 
um, that, again, we were lucky because perhaps a couple of years after that, that collection would not have been available or might have been available at a considerably higher price. Uh, so, um, so in those early years, um, we were able to, in a sense, build the business before the market really heated up. And that's kind of important because you make mistakes at the beginning and if you don't have the luxury of making mistakes when the downside is small, then, you know, sometimes one mistake can kill you. But I think we were lucky that uh, we had the space to grow the business, the time to grow the business uh, before the market really took off, which was around 2005, six, uh, and of course, by seven, every market was rolling along. So, um, uh, but then again, you know, I wouldn't actually do everything to timing because uh, by the same token that we were there at the right time we got started, uh, like all other businesses, uh, you know, after the 2008 crash happened, it was, you know, uh, navigating out of that was certainly a much bigger challenge even than the startup. Uh, because by then we had a big infrastructure, by then we had a lot of investment, and uh, in 2008 uh, caught everyone in all markets uh, uh, blindsided a lot of people. Uh, but um, so that's on the art side. So I'd say a combination of luck and making some decisions that were correct. Um, on the economic side, it's much more conventional in the sense that you know, I came to graduate school, you know, did my PhD. Uh, I did get lucky in the sense that uh, Columbia was a great job and, and it was the first job that I had. And, and uh, you know, I was. Uh, lucky enough that uh, some of the things I was working on um, seemed to resonate with people and, um, and so I had the opportunity to stay on. Well, that's great. You have so many experiences already. Um, the next question is, I know that Icon Galleries and Funds, they balance a lot of projects and you'll probably be talking about these in your lecture this afternoon, but can you tell us a little more about the projects that Icon Groups launched in 2014 to support affordable housing initiatives in India? Sure. So that actually was uh, not part of the gallery initiative. Mm -hmm. This was an independent uh, initiative that we had, which was um, uh, to support affordable housing in India. And affordable housing uh, really is a reference to uh, housing for the lower middle class uh, people in India. I mean, India, the, uh, everybody knows that uh, the numbers, the population is very high. And it's a huge challenge to be able to provide basic services, including housing. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the current government, which came to power just very recently, a little over a year back, one of their stated goals when they were running for election was that they wanted to provide affordable housing to every Indian by 2020. Now, they're not going to do that because the, the problem is too big. Uh, but it just underscores the importance of this in the national debate. And so what uh, we uh, decided to do is we decided to start uh, two projects, uh, both in what are sometimes called second tier cities. So this is not Delhi or Mumbai or one of the big urban centers, because in the big urban centers there are lots of housing issues as well, but um, the, the scale is such that it's difficult for somebody coming from outside to really do anything in any substantive way. Um, so we started on these second tier cities. In some ways, the second tier cities' demand for affordable housing is just as acute, if not more, because uh, you know basically what's happened is that people have um, now slowly you know moved out of. Um, I mean, their aspirations have changed. You know, once upon a time, only very very few people thought they would ever be able to afford, let's say, a car or a scooter, you know, two wheeler. And now many people do that, and so the next challenge is uh, can we find a house, or a flat, really, not much bigger than perhaps this room, <laughs> Basic for, comforts, yeah, yeah. So for somebody to live in. Uh, and that's the challenge of affordable housing, and so we're just, you know, hoping to help in our small way. That's really 